It all started at like midnight. It was about 4 a.m. My wife Ashley came in and woke me up and said, We gotta go to the hospital now. It's like, duh, okay. I was binge watching Making a Murderer. And I said, that's great. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit more sleep and then we can uh, tackle this thing head on. Heidi called to me from the bathroom and she's like, I think my water broke, but I'm not sure because I peed in it. <laughs> I think I actually put down a garbage bag on the passenger seat in case her water were to break on the way over. We're like driving to the hospital and I'm timing her contractions and they're already like three minutes apart. At least I think they are, like I've never done this before so I'm like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I don't remember any medical details whatsoever. Like I don't remember what the doctors told us. I don't remember like how contractions work. So we got to the hospital, we got checked in. Yes, I don't know. I was just like, there's going to be a baby. I'm going to be here. If I'm not here, then I'm going to go back to the apartment and feed the cat. And then we waited. I was so bored. I was so bored. It would have been great if the hospital had like just a little movie theater. I remember being very like upset at the people in the hospital and their lack of urgency. Like Heidi is like in pain and and they're like, here, fill out these forms and just have a seat. My wife was kind of a zombie for most of it. Mmm, mmm, just trying to get through the pain. Mmm. She was bouncing on the, the, the yoga ball. I don't know why. Like, stretch it out? I don't know. So I was like kneading this hard plastic into her back and like that gave her comfort because the other pain was so strong. Heidi's like having all this pain and, and I'm just sitting there like an idiot. You do what you can but there's really only so much you can do. And if I could have just grown a uterus and had the baby for her I absolutely would have but I couldn't so. And water finally broke and it was just like a really like inconsequential thing like if she hadn't pointed it out I wouldn't have. I don't, I don't know if I even heard it. You know, she got dilated far enough that we got to move into labor and delivery. Crazy experience. It's like, I was not a dad, and I'm about to enter this room and become a dad. So we're just there for like hours. Even more waiting. So I watched a couple of more episodes of Making a Murder. I'd go eat lunch and dinner at In-N-Out. Then I curled up on what they call the dad sofa. They're just like, there's your bed. Like, it's not an actual bed. It doesn't fold out. They just give you another couch cushion. It's a shitty little sofa. We're getting ready to push. I'm like, I'm like the coach. So I was like holding one leg. Go, Ash. Go, Ash. You got this. You know, we were like going for it. She's right here, you know, and I'm behind the curtain. And like, I wasn't sure if I wanted to like look at it. Wasn't sure if that would like ruin the romance. Like, do you want to see? And I'm like, no. Like, I was just all over the place. There was no detail too grisly for me in that moment. You know what? The vagina is like a Swiss Army knife. And this is just one of its other jobs. I see a little bit of my son's hair, like, coming. For real. Coming. Like this. Just this top of his head. It looks like a dead muskrat just floating in a pond. I know what's happening. You know, I know it's just like... Out a little bit, oh, push, 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 right back in. Coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out. And we did that for about an hour. His heart rate dropped um, momentarily, and that was enough for the doctors and nurses to make the call. We're doing an emergency C-section. That was terrifying. The doctor asked me, like, is it okay if we use a suction cup? And I was like, well, is it safe? And he was like... You know, from my vantage point, I just saw, like, I guess, Something like that. There's like something like that going on. I kept a brave face on as they wheeled her to get her prepped for surgery. Um, but when they came and handed me a stack of scrubs was when I really lost it. I broke down, hugged my mom, cried my eyes out for a couple minutes. So we used a little suction cup thing and he got it on there and she gave it one big push and then he was just, just trying to pull that baby out and that's when the doctor did the episiotomy. So he does that, and then I see a little head, just like thunk, like a greasy little pigeon, just like thunk. Where he takes a knife and he like cuts the hoo-ha open further so that it, the baby can come out, and that is what got me. So gross. It looked very similar to field dressing a deer. Cool. And then at uh, 
1.03 a.m. on June 6th, uh, we met our son, Christian. I was just like, okay, baby's here. And, um, and they're like, we're gonna take her over to a little table. So they're like, you wanna go over and say hi to her? So I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, they let me cut the cord, which was really anticlimactic. Um, but then the nurses took him over to the little bed thing and I got to go over and, um, and meet my son. Put my hand down and she just grabs this pinky, you know, this itty bitty little hand, just grabs it right away. And it's just something in my brain just opened up something that wasn't, you know, wasn't there before. I guess it makes it 100% real the moment you get to touch him and say his name and he sort of is opening his eyes for the first time and probably one of the first things he saw was a very blurry version of me. I know that my life is never going to be the same. And that's when I became a dad.